Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I wanted to go all the way back to some real basics. We're going to cover flat colors and shading. Reason being is that I was contacted by the very nice team over at My Mini Factory who asked whether or not I'd be interested in doing some basic painting guides for folks who are doing their own 3D printing. So if you're anything like me, you know, and you've got an interest in 3D printing or miniatures for your D&D campaigns or pretty much anything, I mean, you've seen some of my 40k related prints and stuff previously, uh, there is that opportunity there then to paint them. And I know it can be pretty daunting. Uh, it's been a long time since I first picked up a brush, but, uh, you know, techniques have changed a little since I was a wee fella. So if you are looking at 3D printing, or you've been doing it for a while, and you want to have a go at painting, uh, I'm here to show you it's really not as hard as you would think. Now this is all very basic. Uh, I mean, you know, as you can see, the girls here whizzing around, these three tieflings. Very simple color schemes, but I think they look quite striking on the table. And if you're looking for a miniature to play your games with, it's really all you need. Now these come courtesy of Cast and Play. I will link to them in the description below. Uh, they have an absolutely immense range of really, really cool figures, and uh, they all come pre-supported. So if you're like me and you're all fingers and thumbs when it comes to supporting your 3D prints, bonus. You know, <laughs> the hard work is done for you. So three tieflings here. Uh, I figure tieflings are a pretty good choice because, well... Look at them, they're fun. <laughs> so I will list all of the paints used in the description below and let's get started. So to start with, once all of the resin's been taken care of and it's been cured, what I've done is gone over it with a primer spray of the Army Painters Leather Brown. Now I've used this because there are a few colors available for primers and I think brown is gonna give us the easiest way to get you know all the other colors on top of. And if we happen to miss anything when we're painting, well, a little bit of brown on a fantasy themed miniature, you're probably not going to see it. Don't worry too much about the little things that you miss. Now, as a quick note, lurking in the background there, you'll see the other two miniatures that I have <laughs> primed up and ready to go. Everything that I'm going to do on this figure, until we get to the skin, I'm going to do on all three at the same time, just so I've got those, you know, prepared. Now, the first color that we'll be applying will be for her... I guess uniform? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it would be classified as with a paladin. I always sort of assume they have like a like a chamber or something that they belong to, which might have similar colors that they wear, but I'm not too sure. I'm just making this one up as I go along. Now for this I'm going to use, this is Wolf Grey from the Army Painter. This is a nice sort of mid-tone grayish blue. And I'm going to pick this because it's going to interfere, I think, least with the other skin colors I've got in mind. And it's pretty cool by itself. So what we need to do first of all is get it out of the pot. Now you do not need to have a wet palette. Um, I've been painting for about 20 years before I decided to finally pull the trigger and, and pick one of these up. And uh, I really do enjoy using it. It's quite useful. But if you are just getting started, any sort of non-porous material will work for this. Uh, Citadel do palette pads. You can even use an old white plate. You know, anything that won't absorb moisture you'll be away laughing. Now let's pour out a little bit of wolf grey. I'm just going to do one, two quick drops of that. And when you first get an army painter paint, what you want to do is squeeze out the first sort of four drops before shaking the bottle, because they normally keep a little bit of medium uh, sort of translucent stuff, which helps the paint flow just up on the top to keep it from jamming. Uh, before you use it, you want to get rid of that. Otherwise, you'll be shaking these things forever. <laughs> Then what I'm going to do is add just a little bit of water off the end of my brush into that paint and stir it in a little. Because if I just use paint straight from the pot, I'm going to get quite clunky, uh, kludgy sort of brush strokes and what have you. It won't look very nice. Now, as a rule, I would suggest here this. It's better to use paint that is too thick rather than paint that's too, too thin. Because if I apply paint that's too thin and I touch the brush to the model, it'll go... <laughs> everywhere and then you, you know, it's always easier to add more paint than take it off. So what I'm going to do is go around all of her, like her jacket collar and what have you here. Uh, let's do this little strappy thing in the front. 
And I'm not too worried if I do hit anything, like for example, this little hanging bit here. I'll paint it a different color later, but because we are gonna paint it a different color, I don't need to worry if I do hit it. Now you'll see, especially if I turn her around, let's do some of her back here. You'll see when I just brush across here, there's a little bit of that brown showing through. Don't worry too much. All you need to do is let this dry, you know, apply a coat. Let it dry for about mm, four or five minutes, then come back and do another coat over the top. Now for a quick point of comparison, on the left hand side, this is one coat. On the second hand side, this is a second coat once that first one's had some time to dry. And I think you'll see what a difference that makes. So I'll finish the other two off now. So our wolf gray is applied, but she's looking a little messy now. That's all right, it's kind of what we're looking for. This is why you start with your largest areas of color. Now what I've got now, this is Gorgon Hide, and this is a very, very light blue, almost white. Now I tend to find that applying color just off white before applying white makes that step a little bit easier. What I'm gonna do is basically tidy up. And I'm gonna go around and do all of the trim on her outfit. Uh, she's gonna look a little bit like a waterbender, I think. <laughs> uh, but you'll see here, there is that little bit of translucency showing through. And same as with the uh, blue, we'll need to come back and do a second coat of this over the top, just to make sure that color's solid. Now, one little piece of advice. As you're painting, you will make little mistakes here and there. So you'll see on the sigil here on the front of her uh, tabard, I've put a little bit too much white on. You'll be tempted when you make a mistake to straight away rinse your brush off and put the original color on. Try not to do that, resist the urge. What you wanna do instead is keep painting. Just finish off what you're doing, you know, put all of the color on, then think about going back and fixing up any little mistakes. Because if you stop every time, you know, the brush doesn't go where you want, you're gonna be going backwards and forwards and spending more time overall on that. So try not to. What I've got now, this is Monster Brown. It's wonderful mid-tone brown. And I'm just gonna apply a couple of thin coats of this over the shield. You'll notice when it first goes on, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. That's okay. All we really want for it is to change up the color of the leather brown a little. Now, once you're satisfied with how that looks, it's time to get on with some metal. I've got plate mail metal here. What I'm gonna do is take my time because there's quite a lot of little metal details on her. Just cruise around all of your bundle now and same as we have been doing already. Just apply a coat of this. All you need to worry about not hitting is the areas that you've already done the color that you want them to be. So the wood here, for example, I'm gonna be a little careful as I go around this ring. Now in retrospect, I did go ahead and actually fill in the whole front of her boot or boots because I figured they were actually sort of a plate mail thing with leather straps at the back. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab some greedy gold. And everywhere that I was gonna paint gold, I've gone ahead and given a layer of silver first because it will make this step much easier. So this little doobler here in the center, uh, her weapon, anywhere now that you wanna be gold or sort of a brassy color, go ahead now and just give it a quick coat of this. Now I'm gonna get into some skin colors. And for this, I've got dragon red to start with. You'll notice as this goes on the, the uh, brown, it dries just a little darker than it looks on your brush, which is quite handy. And one of the questions that comes up all the time is how do I reach certain parts of a miniature? Well, flip her upside down. You'll find it much easier to get to things like under her chin and at her neck by flicking her upside down. Uh, so I'm gonna do some of this off camera because <laughs> it's a little easier without this sitting in the way. But don't forget she does have a tail too. And same as with all of the colors we've been doing so far, you may find in some places you're gonna to need to come back and give it a second coat. Now I subscribe to the Hellboy theory that the horns should be the same color as the skin, but you of course can differ from that if you like. A couple of coats of dragon red over that and we're on to a winner. Doesn't look particularly appealing yet though, does it? <laughs> right, let's get on. I've got wizard's orb and I'm gonna use this on the next one. 
Now there's our two coats of Wizard's Orb, and I love this color, eh? The Army Painter range has a lot of really nice colors that you don't tend to see in other ranges. So I'm going to go a little outside the box for the next one. Let's get Orc Blood. Yeah, look at that. And there, just waiting to dry, is our purple. Goodness me, that is, whew, that is bright. <laughs> now, we're really starting to get into the last couple of stages. What I've got here, just putting a little bit of water into my Necromancer Cloak. This is a nice dark grey, it's not quite black. Helps if I hold this in the right spot. What I'm going to do is cover over her hair in this. This does is helps break up the shape of her head, some of those features, but without adding another color. So let's just go and fill this in, and I'll do that for the other two as well. So with that done, I've got a little bit of leather brown, same as we used for our primer. And what I'm going to do is go back over some of the areas that I want to actually be leather. So you can class this, this is really the beginning of the end. This is our tidy up stage. So what you're looking for is any areas that you wanted to be leather in the first place. Once you finish with this, you can get your uh, Gorgon hide, tidy up the white, uh, any, anything now that you would need to double check and make sure it's a nice solid color. Get in there now and just do your leather and all of your tidy up stuff. Now when you've done all of your tidy up and you're satisfied with how that's going to look, you can go ahead and start adding different colors for laces and what have you, but we're deliberately keeping things simple. And for that reason, we're going to use one shade over the whole model. That's going to be strong tone. This stuff can be pretty fierce coming straight out of the pot though. So what we're actually going to do is to essentially cut it a little bit. We're going to thin it out with some of the quick shade mixing medium, which is this stuff here. This is basically clear shade. So, going back to your palette, whether you're using a plate or whatever, I've given this a good shake, and we're going to add one, two, three drops of that. And of our mixing medium, one, two, three as well. So good half and half. Now I've tended to find the best army painter brush to apply this stuff with is the small dry brush. What we'll do is mix all of that together. It will look kind of cloudy and gross, if I'm honest. It doesn't look particularly inspiring, this little messy brown puddle. But you watch this. Get your brush and just start applying this all over the model. You'll see straight away ah, what's going to happen here. But it'll look a little bit kind of foggy going on. So try not to overload any areas. Just make sure that you are working it into the recesses. So, for example, in the edge of our collar here, you want to make sure that you're just getting that line to help define that area of detail. So take your time. Go ahead, fill in the whole model. You want to cover everything without this kind of generosity, if you will. Then leave that for about 20-30 minutes to dry. Now I think this demonstrates two things. First of all, once that's dried, you've got a really cool shading effect, which is super easy to achieve, and looks pretty cool, I think. Second, I think I need three hands. That would be way more useful. <laughs> uh, from here, what you could do would be all sorts. You could highlight the skin with a different color. You can uh, base them with some kind of you know sand or what have you. But what I'm going to do with these three now is just to go ahead and blacken their bases so that they're ready for use on the tabletop. Now if you are looking for ideas with how you could take this a little bit further, I thoroughly recommend stick around and check out the How I Paint Things playlist when that pops up, because I've been doing a few videos of these, and uh, I'm pretty sure you'll find something interesting in there. Whether you're just getting started, or if you want to do something a little bit different, um, you know, I'm always trying to show off ways that'll either save time, or be nice and simple. So, like I said, if you are literally just getting started painting and, you know, you've got a 3D printer that you happen to want to knock out some miniatures on, I think this does go some way to demonstrating that, you know, you print one, paint it, and, okay, you know what, you can come back and paint it again. You know, keep on practicing, because you will improve. 
So again, massive shout out to My Mini Factory and Cast and Play uh, for helping make this one possible. Uh, this was a lot of fun, and uh, I think I'm really going to enjoy going back and uh, you know, trying, <laughs> trying a few different color schemes on these miniatures. Uh, maybe a gray outfit might have been a slightly better choice, but hey, I can try that again in my own time. If you have any questions or anything, of course, feel free, drop in the old comment box below. So thank you very much again to Exit 23 Games, who supply the light and sound equipment, and all of the patrons who help keep me in paint, which is pretty important given what I do, including producers Jonathan Harris, Alan Nuttall, Ben Hicks, Boson, and Kyrie Crawford. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and enjoy the rest of your day.